Good morning, and welcome to the online Sunday service from the Urbana United Methodist Church. My name is Corey Mowry, and I am very excited to welcome you to our online service today. As we, as we progress through these challenging times, through these unprecedented times, we're noticing that things are starting to look a little different. And you know what? A little change, a lot of change can be a good thing. And what we really want to do today and what we want to do for the rest of our time when we're online is we want to make sure that we are, we are using these new tools and these new experiences to reach and restore hope in Urbana. For those of you who've been with us, you know that we are currently working on a series on hashtag Hope for Urbana, spreading love in 40 days to 100 people and bringing hope to our communities, bringing hope to the people who maybe need a little bit of a pick-me-up. If you're new, you know what, now's an excellent time. I think we'll check in with Terry McLean and let's see if she can't recap what exactly are we doing with this challenge. And if you've seen this before and you're brought up to speed, why don't you use this time to welcome each other at, uh, at church this morning. Hey everyone, I'm Terry McLean, a servant leader here at Urbana UMC. I am so excited to invite you to join me in the 40 day Restore Hope Challenge that will begin tomorrow, April 27th, and last through June 5th. So, are you in? Are you ready to jump, jump in your happy truck and get started? Well, this is what we're inviting you to do. First, get a journal. Write it down. Write down your 100 extra mile moments in the next 40 days. And it can be on your computer in a document, on your phone, in a notes section, wherever you want to, just so you can track it. Second, be sure to post your items on social media using our hashtag, Hope, the number four, in Urbana. It will be exciting to see what everybody is doing. And number three, go ahead and tell your family and your friends verbally or your small group. They'd love to see how this challenge is changing us as well as others. And four, keep it simple. It doesn't have to take a lot of money, but think about something that you could do that would be extra. For example, if you like to bake, Bake an extra pie and give it to your neighbor. Or take something down to the fire department or the police station for those that are still working on the front line. Or maybe there's a nurse that you'd like to bless their family with dinner. You could also, rather than say, I'll pray for you, go ahead and say, actually pray with them in person or send them a text prayer. And just take that extra step to do something different and something special that will encourage other people. Okay, so I know you're excited to begin, just as I am, this Restore Hope Challenge and to discover new and powerful ways that God is going to work in and through us. So, if you're in, drop down and write, I'm in, on the comment section. Got it? Yeah, go ahead and do that right now. Awesome. Thank you so much for jumping in, and we're looking forward to seeing all of the stories and experiences in the days and week ahead. God bless you, and God will indeed bless us as we bless others to serve others and being the hands and feet of Jesus. Thanks for that reminder, Terry. So I'm assuming everybody's still in. We're all still going for this challenge. We want to reach 100 people in 40 days. We've done two weeks so far. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? We have... Um, encouraged everybody and we welcomed everybody and you know what today we're going to do something I swear when I when I heard it when I read it and I said Pastor Jim I am really curious how you are going to spin this to hope for Urbana because today we are going to admonish each other and for those of you who are cringing like isn't that like one of that's an a word that's like a four letter admonish how is that spreading hope we're going to learn. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm not going to take away his glory as he shows you how we're going to turn this into spreading love, okay? But I'm going to give you a little teaser. When I look it up, when I translate today's Bible verse in the New Living Translation, admonish is used um, as teach and counsel, okay? And so today's focus is really going to be about spreading truth. Now, if we're talking about spreading truth, and as I'm talking to you through Facebook, and as you're watching me on Facebook, and as you're currently typing in your greetings to your, to your, your friends and, and hitting the like button and sharing all this, how have you been at sharing the truth on digital media? 
I just want to I just want to point this out. For those of us who graduated high school in the 1990s, hashtag is also referred to as the pound sign or number. And I know personally as I've interacted with people using hashtags, it always seemed to me like some way that you're coming up with catchy phrases. Maybe you think of this differently. But did you know that hashtag is a tool? Putting hashtag and this phrase together is a tool that can help us search things online. If you're on Facebook right now, go ahead and search hashtag, I don't know, you could search hashtag for Urbano. Just type it up in the search bar. When you search for these hashtags, you know it pulls up all the posts of everybody who has a public account, even if they're not your friends. And so what's awesome with hashtag Urbana is if you're having a bad day and you need a little pick-me-up, you can search that hashtag. And even if somebody's not in your sphere of friends, you can see how people are reaching and restoring and bringing hope to others. Now, if you are right now typing in hashtag for Urbana, you might notice it's a little sparse. It's a little light. And that's not because we aren't spreading love. That's not because we haven't been welcoming. And that's not because we haven't been encouraging. And I know this personally because just last week I joined the 20th century. Um, and I got a Facebook account. And I've been flooded with everybody's posts. And I think it's awesome. Do you know I've seen at least a half dozen stories of I had a bad day and somebody sent me this. I had a bad day and somebody called me. Um, I'm struggling through something, will you pray with me? And these are beautiful and wonderful posts that only your sphere of friends are seeing. And if we can add hashtag Urbana to those posts, then somebody in Urbana, or somebody in your community, when they're having a bad day, can search on Facebook and get a little pick-me-up. If you have Pinterest, you know what I'm talking about. Do, do you have one of those boards? I have one of those boards. Faith in Humanity Restored. That's a little verbiage. It's a little wordy, right? Hashtag Hope for Urbana, way easier. So today we're going to talk about admonishing others. We're going to be talking about spreading truth. And if you've been struggling, how can I do these challenges when I'm not allowed to be in the same room as my coworkers, when I have to main six remain six feet away from everybody else or stay at home, don't overlook the fact that you have this tool at your disposal. You have the ability to reach people online. And let's do our best. So please, share with us, share with your community. How are people encouraging you? How have they supported you? How have they welcomed you? And now this week, when we talk about spreading the truth of Jesus' love, how are you spreading it? If you can't go outside, you can still spread it from inside. And with that, I think this is an excellent time for us to start worshiping. So, Caitlin, will you please lead us in our worship set? Yeah, thank you, Corey. I'm Caitlin. This is Amy, John Luke, and Maggie, and we would love for you to worship with us this morning. you search me, how you know me, you perceive my every thought from afar, in all my wandering, still you love me, King of glory, you pursue my anxious heart, and even when I'm not your faithful, even when I doubt your truth holds, even when I'm lost, you won't let me go. And when my heart is dry, your grace flows. No matter where I run, I'm not far from home. Yeah, I may be weak, but you're able. And even when I'm not, you're faithful. afar and all my wandering but still you love me king of glory you pursue my anxious heart 
And even when I'm not your faithful, even when I doubt your truthfulness, even when I'm lost, you won't let me go. When my heart is dry, your grace flows. No matter where I run, I'm not far from home. Yeah, I may be weak, but you're able. of the sea, even there it's your hand that will lead me wherever I go, wherever I go, where can I go from your spirit, and where can I hide from your face, Lord, where can I flee from your presence, where would I go, where would I go, if I rise to the heavens, you're with me, if I fall to the depths of the sea, even there it's your hand that will lead me. Wherever I go, wherever I go, wherever I go, wherever I go. And even when I'm not your faithful, Lord, even when I doubt your truthfulness, even when I'm lost, you won't let me go. No. And when my heart is dry, your grace flows. No matter where I run, I'm not far from home. Yeah, I may be weak, but you're able. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in heaven. This gift of love and righteousness Sworn by the ones he came to save Till on that cross where Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ ground his body lay light of the world by darkness lay then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since Christ has lost his grip on me I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life. 
the power of Christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of As we think about the life of Christ um, in, in the song that we just sang and, and in the hymn that we'll sing next, um, I want to read this, uh, this passage from Romans 12, um, starting in verse 9. It says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for, um, for, your, for your word, the gift that it is, the teaching that it provides, um, the reminder to keep being uh, joyful in hope, to keep on pressing forward. We thank you that as children, um, we are never lacking in hope. Lord, we just, we want to say thank you uh, for your grace as we grow, your patience as we, as we continue to, to look forward and to move forward. Um, and even with our sin and our shortcomings, you still love us. So we, we just say thank you for that. Lord, you are, you are awesome. We give you all the glory and the honor. Um, and would you um, continue to pray with me the, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand he
Thank you. That was awesome. Hey, I'm Christopher Donnell, one of the pastors here at Urbana UMC, and we again are so glad that you're joining us in worship this morning. It is now the time to prepare your tithe and offering this morning. So there'll be a, a slide at the bottom of the screen that you can follow along. But first, while worship services have been postponed indefinitely for right now, we do have a plan and precautions that we're taking to start to try to gather by June 7th. Now, this is not for sure, but we're working really hard and diligently to make that happen. So stay tuned as anything can change from week to week, as you all know, with this pandemic that we're in. Stay tuned to the newsletter and emails as well. However, we do continue to do our mission and our part in Hope for Urbana and in our community as we have mission that goes in week in and week out at our church. And as you may know, this past Easter, we took a special offering for our community as part of the hashtag Hope for Urbana Challenge. Now, the offering went towards Mayflowers and Teabaggers, both which are small business restaurants right here on Main Street in downtown Urbana. And because of your generosity, we raised almost $3,600 that we split between the two businesses. So uh, praise God. Thank you for your faithfulness. And, and actually, go ahead and check out these pictures that are at the bottom of your screen right now of, of Pastor Jim handing uh, Dale um, and Carol from Mayflowers their check and Grant and Namora their check at Teabaggers. And, and, and look at those awesome smiling faces. And just know your generosity is bringing hope to Urbana. But as the work and ministry continues, we need uh, your, your faithfulness and, and tithes and offerings to continue that mission. So again, follow the link on the bottom of the screen if you feel led to give to our church. And we're also still collecting gifts for the Perry family who lost their house in a house fire and cars and a couple of their family pets. And uh, if you feel led to give to the Perry family today, we have a, a special drop-down box on our give site, PayPal, uh, that says uh, the Brook Ferry, Brook Perry Family Love Offering, sorry, um, and you can click that, and uh, you can uh, give to that fund. We're still collecting that for a couple weeks, um, but would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are hope for Urbana, God. We thank you that you lead us, just as we just sang, and um, God, you are leading us through this time and, and this, this crazy pandemic that we're in, Lord, and uh, Lord, we know the mission continues. We know the needs are still there. Uh, we, we are so thankful for families like um, the, the Mayflower business and, and tea baggers uh, and even the Perrys today. We ask that you bless them this morning, God, in their endeavors and in their lives, God. And we ask that you would meet their needs as you're using this church to meet other people's needs, God. And Lord, as we continue, Lord, hold us dear and close to your heart, Father, um, as so many of us are struggling and, and worried, God. But let us put our faith and hope in you this morning as you lead us through this time. And all God's kids said, amen. So at this time, we're going to watch a short video uh, with myself and Caitlin. Hey, I'm Christopher Donnell, one of the pastors here at church. And today we continue our series, Hashtag Hope for Urbana, where we're looking to bring and restore hope throughout Champaign County. Throughout this series, we've been using the one another statements found in scripture. Today we're going to use admonish one another. Now admonish means to correct or to change one's thinking. And I don't know about you, but I could use some thought change right now, especially in this pandemic where you can find yourself getting in a rut and feeling down. We really need each other to help us change our thinking in this time. And so today we're going to hear a story of how this has played out in Caitlin Simmons' life where she had an admonish one another moment. So let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Caitlin and this is my story. A few years ago when I was involved in the youth ministry, I graduated high school. Um, Chris and Becca came up to me and talked to me about loving my mother. Um, and, and the relationship that I had with my mom um, wasn't good. There, it was rocky and there was distance created just because we never got along. Um, we didn't have the same beliefs and um, it was always about who was right and who was wrong in the relationship. We were always fighting. So they came up to me and they talked to me about loving my mother. And so I really started to pray and ask the Lord to change my heart for my mom um, and ask for help and strength in loving her well. Um, and now I wouldn't change the relationship that I have with my mother for anything. Um, we always get excited to see each other and hang out with each other. Um, and we love each other so much. And it's all thanks to friends who admonished me and who, who called me out and were accountable for me um, and loving my mother well and doing that. So. I'm so appreciative and thankful, and that's my story. Well, that was awesome. Thank you, Christopher and Caitlin. Uh, 
for sharing and taking time to put that little video together. What a great testimony of how we can help encourage and restore hope by actually admonishing one another. And today we continue uh, again our sermon series entitled Hashtag Hope for Urbana. So I hope we're all, you know, driving around in that ice cream truck, that happy truck in our community as we uh, continue the Restore Hope Challenge and deliver hope, happiness, joy, encouragement, and welcome to 100 and people, 100 people through June 5th. And last Sunday, remember, we celebrated Holy Communion together. And I know serving communion or having communion, celebrating Holy Communion online is kind of weird and different. Uh, we have also encouraged people to use whatever you got. See, whatever you can find uh, at home to represent the body and blood of Christ. Well, check out this picture of orange juice and croutons. Uh, this is what Trey McGee used uh, to celebrate communion last Sunday. So remember, as we shared last week, uh, the elements aren't important. It's what they represent. Orange juice and croutons really can represent the body and blood of Christ. So, so right now on the comment section, give a little shout out to Trey uh, and tell him a uh, way to go, way to be so resourceful. So, you know, as I told him, I like his style. And last week we were challenged, um, in addition uh, to finding extra mile moments to encourage one another, remember, to also look uh, for opportunities to accept and welcome one another, especially those who are radically different from us or who we might say are our opposites. And I hope we all had opportunities, even in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic to share God's love in tangible ways this past week. And today we continue our efforts to create 100 extra mile moments through June 5th. Uh, we're going to talk about, as Christopher reminded us earlier, the importance of admonishing one another. Um, and I know you might be wondering, hmm, that doesn't sound very encouraging, as Corey said, but we're going to turn it into a very encouraging opportunity. My name's Jim Lillibridge, one of the pastors here at the Urbana United Methodist Church, and before we get rolling, let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, as we get started... You know, I think a lot of times uh, when we think of the word admonish, we think of maybe rep being reprimanded or disciplining uh, someone. I know I was certainly admonished a lot growing up by my mother and father. I still remember my mom uh, wagging her finger at me and saying, now, Jimmy, 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 you know better than that. And I can still remember uh, being chased by my dad uh, with the shoe in his hand and him saying, now, Jimmy, if you run, you're only going to make it worse. So just come here and take your punishment. Uh, but um, you know, admonishment comes in a lot of different forms. And check out this oldie but goodie about how one neighbor admonished another neighbor by writing a letter. The letter to the neighbor reads, Dear Frank, we've been neighbors for six tumultuous years. When you borrowed my tiller, you returned it in pieces. When I was sick, you blasted rap music. When your dog went to the bathroom all over my lawn, you laughed. I could go on, but I'm certainly not one to hold grudges. So I'm writing this letter to tell you that your house is on fire. Cordially, Bob. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's funny. That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. Uh, but when I'm going with, uh, but where I'm going with all of this is to direct us back to the actual definition of admonish. What does it really mean to admonish one another? But before we get to that, let's, let's listen to Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Now in the third chapter of Colossians, 
The Apostle Paul is reminding the church at Colossae uh, of various virtues, virtues that they should embrace as the Jesus followers, as the body of Christ, the church. And then uh, starting around at verse 15, he kind of wraps up this little section. And this is how he begins. He says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, I want to break this passage down a bit because it ties things together as we talk about admonishing, which means, as Christopher reminded us earlier, to redirect a person's thinking. It means to, to speak the truth, uh, to speak into, to speak truth into a person's life. Sometimes the word admonish is translated as warn or caution, but to admonish one another is really high octane, okay, high octane encouragement as we help one another hear God's truth in difficult and trying times. But let's back up again and go back to Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17. Now check this out. Check out again verse 15. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Now the word rule here means to umpire. Let the peace of Christ, let the peace of Christ be the umpire of your hearts. In other words, the community of faith, the church, is a body of people who come together having made Jesus the umpire, the ruler of their hearts, Therefore, making it possible for the church to experience unity and peace with one another. And that certainly is a cause for thanksgiving. And then, continuing in verse 16, Paul says, Now let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another, with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude, in your hearts. So then, as Jesus followers who have made Jesus the umpire and ruler of our hearts, we can let the message of Christ dwell among us richly. And that message, remember, that message is that we are an Easter people. The tomb is empty. Jesus lives and reigns today as the ruler of our hearts. The message of Christ is the good news that we are not alone in the universe. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory, and Jesus is always our help in this life and our hope for the life to come. And because we are an Easter people, we are called to minister to and be ministered by one another. Paul says we're to teach and change the thinking of one another with all wisdom, and get this, with all wisdom through psalms, God's word, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. So how do we admonish one another? How do we change the thinking of one another? Well, we do it through God's word, we do it through hymns, and we do it uh, from songs from the Spirit. We do it with hymns, How Great Thou Art, Amazing Grace. We do it with songs we might hear on Air One or K-Love. Uh, all of that uh, we can use to change or redirect the thinking of another. For example, not long ago, uh, after Dr. Ray Johnson passed away, uh, I was driving down US 68 towards Springfield when the song Home by Chris Tomlin came on. Now this song speaks of how this life, in this life, we have all kinds of trials and challenges. But someday when we make the transition from this life to the life to come, we'll be home where God will make it all right. 
So as I was driving south on 68 and listening to this song, I thought about Ray Johnson. I thought about how he suffered from ALS in his final years. And I was rejoicing knowing that Ray was home and completely restored and was no doubt playing golf at St. Peter's Country Club. And as I thought about that, I, I grabbed my cell phone and called Ray's daughter, Chris Ann Harmison. And I told her how that song had touched me and made me think of her dad, who was now home and completely whole and well, seeking to bring comfort to Chris Ann in the midst of her grief and sorrow. Now, you see, that is admonishment. Or if somebody's going through a, a difficult uh, time and experiencing a bad case of the blues, we can share the hymn, Be Still My Soul, which reminds us in the first verse, Be still my soul, the Lord is on your side. Because, you know, when we got the blues, sometimes we think nobody's on our side. When we're discouraged by life's events and things around us, it seems like nobody's on our side. And maybe where's God? He's left the building. And here this hymn reminds us, be still, the Lord is on your side. And then it continues, be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. The song reminds us that while it may seem that God is absent, he's present with us to lead us to victory through whatever trial or hardship we're facing. See, that's admonishment. That's redirecting the thinking of another. You see, we can offer high-octane encouragement and change the thinking of others by using songs and hymns. And let's not forget God's word. If we know someone uh, who's having trouble getting past maybe the poor decisions and choices that he or, she, he or she made in the past, well, we can share Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, which says, forget the former things. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And we can then remind this person to stop, you know, dwelling on the poor choices and bad decisions of way back when, uh, and, but to look forward to the new thing that God is beginning to work in her or his life. Now, that's admonishment. That's redirecting the thinking of another. And if we know someone who is feeling all alone in life and, and, and maybe just facing a lot of challenges, I mean, we can share Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, which says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. See, we can provide high-octane encouragement by reminding one another that God goes with us wherever we go, and he will never leave us alone, and he never, ever turns his back on us. He never, ever ignores us. He never, ever walks away from us. That's admonishment, redirecting the thinking of another. But now, moving on, as you can see, we can use God's word, hymns, and songs of the Spirit to admonish, to change the thinking of another and offer high-octane encouragement when people are facing difficult times. Now, the possibilities are endless on how we can do this, how we can reach out and touch one another in this way. So now, uh, here's the grand finale of this little section of, of Scripture. This is the big finish. In Colossians 3, verse 17, it says this, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, whether with our lips or our lives, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, Paul finishes this little section off by telling uh, the Jesus followers of Colossae. And he's reminding you and me, the Jesus followers of here and wherever we live, 
uh, uh, that we are a people who have Jesus, remember, as the umpire of our hearts and have been called and set apart to minister to and be ministered by one another as we teach and admonish one another with our lips and our lives that we're to do it all in the name of Jesus. In other words, the phrase, in the name of the Lord Jesus, means that whatever we do, empowered by the Spirit of God, it needs to be something that Jesus would willingly sign his name to. It's something that Jesus, we know Jesus would affirm, applaud, and endorse. Or it's just something we know Jesus would do. So who do we know that's facing difficult times and needs us to restore hope by admonishing them, by redirecting their thinking and offering high-octane encouragement? Who do we know that's feeling helpless and hopeless or is discouraged or rejected or is alone or lost or or confused or depressed or guilt-ridden or confused or unclear about their purpose in life? Remember, we're an Easter people. The tomb is empty, and the same power that raised Jesus from the tomb is at our disposal. And as an Easter people, we have Jesus, remember, as the umpire and ruler of our hearts, and have been set apart to teach and admonish one another with our lips, with our words, with our life, with our actions, all in the name of the name that's above every name all in the name of the Lord Jesus, so that God's name will be praised. Now, as I wind things up uh, today, I want to share a time several years ago uh, when I admonished someone. I was serving the Fort Recovery uh, United Methodist Church back in the 1980s, Uh, And it was an older gentleman who at the time was in his 80s, and his name was Jake Betts, God rest his soul. Jake had a, had a big heart, and just about every month, Jake and his wife, uh, Hildred, would stop by the parsonage, and they would hand Tammy and I a $20 bill, and $20 bill was, was huge. Uh, that meant we could have some groceries or maybe do something just on our own, but he would do that every month. One day, Jake was ill, and so I stopped by the house just to see how he was doing. And somehow, I don't know how we got there, but somehow we started talking about Holy Communion. So I asked him if he'd like me to come back and serve him Communion. And he says, oh, my, no, preacher. No, 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 preacher. He says, I'm not worthy to take Communion. Communion. You see, preacher, you don't know me that well, but I made some bad mistakes in my life. Well, you see, it was time to do some admonishing. It was time to redirect Jake's thinking. So I said to him, Jake, you know, what we celebrate when we take and celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, what we celebrate is never our worthiness, but the worthiness of Jesus Christ. We remember the body broken and the blood shed. We remember the sacrifice Jesus made on our behalf to conquer sin and defeat death. Oh, no, 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 Jake, I said. No, Jake, none of us are are worthy. But what we remember when we take the bread and cup is Jesus' amazing grace and the abundant life he provides as we put our faith and trust in him alone. We are all saved by grace through faith, not by works, not by deeds, not by anyone's worthiness. Because none of us are worthy. We're made worthy in the person of Jesus Christ. Jake thought for a moment And then he said, well, preacher, and he was an older man, and back then it's like they didn't call you pastor, Jim was just preacher, okay? And he said, preacher, I I really never thought of it like that before. Thanks for clearing that up for me. And so then I went home, got my communion set, came back, and Jake Betts and I celebrated communion together. You see, see, that's what we do. 
That's what you do and I do. That's what we do. That's what Jesus' followers do. We clear things up for people. We don't bring a fog in. We don't make things look worse. We clear things up. We help people to see the truth, the truth of what God has done on our behalf and what God can do through us. We redirect people's thinking. We admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, through God's word, through hymns and songs from the Spirit. So what extra mile moments can we implement this week as we continue our Restore Hope Challenge? Who do we know that's in a tough spot? Who do we know that's going through a difficult time and needs us to hop in that happy truck and drive on over with high octane encouragement and go and admonish and redirect their thinking all in the name and power of Jesus? Who is God laying on our heart? When we stop and think about that, and we ask, Lord, who? God will show us the who. And when that happens, let's go out, let's back up that happy truck, let's clean it up, and let's get it ready so that we can put it into action this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would, would you take these words, would you take this message and let it go deep in our hearts? Let us be good servants of yours this week as you send us out to admonish and redirect the thinking of others. Work through us, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit to restore hope, to redirect people's thinking, and to bring the truth of your word and hymns and songs of the Spirit into people's lives. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm Christopher Donnell, again, one of the pastors here at UUMC. And again, I got some announcements for you today. Uh, first off, happy Mother's Day. And uh, to all the mothers out there and women in your life who are special, so check out this video. <music> Again, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Second, the Sycamore House Pregnancy and Family Life Center is holding a virtual baby bottle drive. Now, this is their annual fundraiser where we passed out baby bottles, and you get your spare change, and you fill them up, and you bring them in the church, and all the, the funds go to support that, the pregnancy center. Well, we're not doing that this year. There is a virtual one. And uh, you can go online to our website or even to our, our uh, newsletter to get more information about that. Third, for the past two years, we have been so grateful for the work of Chris Combs as the Director of Discipleship and Mission. He recently got a full-time job at Honeywell, and so he was unable to uh, do his commitments here to church. And so we, uh, we bless him and we thank, you, thank him for all of his hard work. However, SPRC, the Staff Parish Relations Committee, met and is happy to announce that Terry McLean will be the new Director of Discipleship and Mission, effective May 1st. So the next time you see Terry, congratulate her, tell her uh, welcome to the staff, and, and we're so excited to work with her. Fourth, we also have kids' ministry opportunities every week. Sunday, Funday, make sure you turn in tonight at 7 o'clock. 
Again, Cliff Meadows always surprises us with something ridiculous. So just tune in just to see what he looks like every week. I promise. It's not going to disappoint. Molly also does a great job. So Sunday, fun day, 7 o'clock, get your kids, get in front of the TV, have some worship and dance around the living room. Also on Wednesdays, our small groups continue at the youth group with our Zoom meetings, and uh, we're having some fun with some games and, and some good conversation and even some worship on there. So if you are a student, 6th to 12th grade, make sure you tune in through Zoom as well. Again, thanks for joining us this morning for worship, and let's continue on. Again, what a beautiful scripture that Pastor Jim taught out of us, taught for us today out of, out of the Bible. And I just want to recap just a couple of those, those phrases in there. It says in verse 15, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. And in 16, it says, let the message about Christ and all of its richness fill your lives. And then lastly, it says, and whatever you do or say, do it as a represent, representative of the Lord Jesus. And uh, what great truth in there. And, and I never even thought about how we can change our mind just by the things we do. And it happens all the time unless you're not thinking about it, right? So how many times have you gotten up and you've been in a sour mood or, or been grumpy and, and you put on that worship music or you put on uh, the song that, that just changes the way you're thinking? And so that's our challenge this week, to do that for ourselves but also to others this week, to admonish them and to, to help correct them and change their thinking from a cloudy storm cloud, right, to something more sunny and shiny for the 
for them and each other. So thanks for joining us. Go with the peace and love of Jesus. And you will be praised. And you will be praised. With angels and saints we sing worthy are you, Lord. And you will be praised. You will be praised. With angels and saints we sing worthy are you, Lord. And it's why I sing your praise will ever be. Ever be on my list? Ever be on my list?